hi everyone um my name is michelle welcome back to my channel so today we're going to do something a little bit different and uh, i'm going to take you on a walk with me so this is home this is singapore sentosa it's where i live this is very literally my back garden my apartment's up there um and i'm gonna go for a walk to pick up my little one from school okay so just crossing the road heading out to the the seafront this is actually one of my favorite spots in uh sentosa i absolutely love it uh we've got this beautiful kind of green area in front of our condo lots of palm trees and someone from the uk never palm trees never get old i <laughs> love a palm tree been here nine years now and um they still don't get old they're still beautiful look at all those palm trees there <laughs> Okay, hopefully you can hear me okay with all of this wind going on. Starting to understand why people use selfie sticks now. My arm is aching already. <laughs> okay, so I just checked my phone. It is 31 degrees, 70% humidity, <laughs> which according to the iPhone is making it actually feel like 35. Um, really, really beautiful day. We get a lot of haze in Singapore, so we don't always get blue skies so when they're out it always feels lovely so as you might have seen from my previous videos i'm on this quest to find balance in my life and the three areas that i'm honestly really torn between are work relationships and looking after myself so yeah within this kind of quest for balance uh one of the uh one of the things i want to commit to myself is just to make sure that I've got a little bit of time each day to do some things that make me happy or make me feel really good. One of those is exercising. So I really enjoy high intensity, strength training, running, things that really get my cardio going, really um, get my cardio going, my heart rate going, things that get the endorphins flowing and make me feel really, really good afterwards. So I try to do that most mornings, I'm up half five six o'clock out that house for sunrise uh, i really really enjoy that the other thing that i'm trying to do is a little bit more neat uh, so a little bit kind of slower exercise um, cycling walking swimming so every monday uh, i try to put down the work and go out for a walk around four o'clock 4 30 and i walk to go and pick my little one up from school it's about eight kilometers but can make that a little longer or a little shorter depending on how I'm doing for time. As you can see, it is a beautiful walk. It's um, very, very, very lucky and most of the time the weather is favorable. So on these walks, I listen to podcasts, audio books, maybe some music, sometimes don't listen to anything, just let my thoughts run away with me, uh, or maybe kind of call friends and family on different time zones. Always a good time to try and catch people in the UK before they start work or when they're on the way to work. Uh, it's, it's been, I've been doing it now for about six weeks and really look forward to this, this weekly walk. It's definitely starting to become a non-negotiable for me, something that I wanna kind of keep up every Monday. Um, yeah, I always kind of feel really good. It really kind of gives me a cut off for the end of the work day and um, yeah, allows me to, yeah, that helicopter, <laughs> it's national day on wednesday so um all the helicopters and planes are practicing there's an air base just on one of the islands down here so i'm sure you're going to hear lots of helicopters and jets and things on this uh this video let's see they're coming around now on the marina on sentosa as you can see lots of phenomenal boats fortunately none of them are mine <laughs> So I was thinking of doing a little series called Walk With Me, where I take you on a walk of Singapore, uh, show you around a little bit, and also just share some of the key insights from any of the books I've been listening to, any of the podcasts, uh, any key takeaways that might be useful or interesting. So I just want to tell you about a book that I've been reading called, or listening to, called Hell Yeah or No by Derek Sivers really interesting small book each chapter is a life lesson um very cool the audiobook is a little weird um they've kind of got these dongs after the end of each chapter which are a little odd um but some of the insights in there are absolutely fascinating and they take you through 
a few of my favorites. Actions, not words, reveal your real values. Um, this one definitely resonated with me because I love talking things through before I do, before I do them. Um, I'm, I am definitely a type of person that is biased towards action, but I'm also a thinker and a planner and a strategist and do really kind of like to think things through beforehand. But ultimately it doesn't matter what you say to people, whether you say it to people or yourself, only your actions will actually reveal um, what you really want to do. Uh, and I think this has kind of been definitely true in this journey. I've got lots of ideas of things that I want to do at the moment, lots of things that I'm really passionate about. I'm not really doing anything. <laughs> so um, it's quite interesting to, to see if I um, get, my, get my arse in gear and start, start actually actioning things. This is why I keep having to stop between the wind, the boats, the helicopters. <laughs> There's one in the distance too. It's all a little bit noisy around here. So if you're not feeling hell yeah, then say no. Uh, as a yes person, I think after reading Danny Wallace's Yes Man, I I have been a yes person. <laughs> I, I definitely have FOMO. I don't like missing out on things. Um, I think this especially pertains to the drinking as well uh, and why I've kind of, why I used to feel it feel so hard to say no to going out and having a drink uh, but to be honest in all areas of my life as well I do like uh, saying yes um, I don't like letting people down I think it's one of the big things but the whole kind of principle in this book of the hell yeah or no is that if you if you say yes to kind of all the mediocre things all the things that maybe you don't that aren't a hell yes uh, when a hell yes does come along you won't necessarily have the capacity to take it on um, or fully experience or appreciate it so by saying no to a few more things you'll be able to open yourself up get yourself ready for when those hell yeses do come along you can grab them with two hands bananas not quite ripe also not really sure I can pinch any <laughs> Next one is unlearning. So things that we have learned in the past aren't necessarily true today. Times change, things change. Uh, we need to look at how to unlearn things, you know, doubt that we know it, question if what we learn is still true or relevant today. Um, I think there's a real skill in unlearning. Again, I think this is something that also comes up in 4,000 weeks. Uh, you know, don't be afraid of unlearning and relearning something again don't assume that we all know <laughs> we all know it because we knew it if that makes sense i don't think we know it yeah don't think we know it because we all knew it that almost sounds quite profound <laughs> so we are um we <laughs> So I feel like the helicopters are just keep circling me. I think they, they've spotted me trying to record and are, um, are having some fun with me, I think. <laughs> so uh, we are now at Tanjong Beach, uh, beautiful Manly Beach on Sentosa. So gonna kind of walk the length of this beach and then head down Palawan Beach as well. There's a few fun things to show you down there. So another point of the book is subtract. So, and I think this kind of leans into that hell yeah or no point that I was talking about earlier as well. I think we all, well, I don't know we all, but I definitely feel that it's easier to add things into life than necessarily take things away. Um, but as Derek says, some of the smartest people he knows are the ones who say no more frequently, laser focus on what they want to do. And um, yeah, maybe simplify life a little bit. Uh, I think the hardest part is deciding what you can subtract. Um, just pausing for a minute, you can probably see I'm super um, sweaty, <laughs> it's really really warm, um, just decided to go and uh, sit on the beach, have a bit of water and um, yeah, just have a bit of a chat. I'm a little bit early on my walk, so um, yeah, it's nice to just stop, stop and take a minute. Life feels like a lot at times. So, yeah, I think maybe having a look at things that I could subtract would be good.
Hmm, so possible futures. So, um, oh, you just saw a little Sentosa trolley go past then. Um, so possible futures. So Derek has got a folder on his computer where he adds in possible futures, uh, ideas, notes, research, plans, um, by adding them to a possible futures folder. There's no pressure or expectation to action them. It just means that he can kind of daydream, plan. Um, I love this and I think this is something that me and my husband already do. We've got lots of shared Pinterest boards where we share different things about what our life could look like if we have that Tuscan farmhouse or if we live in Australia or different places. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Here down at Palawan Beach on the Sentosa in Singapore. This one's always a little busier, a few more tourists down here. Um, it's very nice though. Um, you see, beautiful troll made out of recycled wood. Um, little islands that you can walk across to and things. Really pretty. Um, game weather's still beautiful a little less windy now which is great so one of the ones in Derek's book that I love is uh, do things that scare you fear is just another form of excitement so you know you want to do things that excite you right <laughs> uh, the more you do these things the less you'll have to fear uh, it's definitely very relevant to this point in my life um, doing a lot that scares me at the moment. Um, hoping I can learn a lot, um, hoping I can improve, and um, yeah, hoping one day it all pays off. Give you a quick twirl of Palawan Beach. Yeah, I'm sweating. Procrastination tip, change and to or. So if you have a list of conditions before you can do something, so for example, before you want to exercise, you have to eat your breakfast and do some work and go and do this chore and this. You're never going to get to it. So try changing and to or. So I'm going to exercise after I have my breakfast or do my work or do this chore. Um, you're more likely to get around to doing it. Good tip parenting things that we do for them we also do for ourselves uh, <laughs> this one really rings true you know I always make sure that my kids are having really great experiences they're learning lots of new, new things but often I'm learning alongside with them I'm having these amazing experiences with them um, they're as much for them or for me as they are for them oh, so I'm almost at the kids school now uh, yeah so it's been fun actually, like vlogging as I'm walking. I uh, hope I can edit this into some sort of sense. But thank you as always so much for watching. I hope it's found it useful. I'll link to Derek's book below. You can actually read it online for free. Um, but it's also quite interesting to listen to as an audiobook. Um, see you next week. Bye.